Thank you uh, for these nice words. Of course, as always during the introductions, my role is uh, overestimated very clearly in all these events. I was only one of these many, many brave people who helped us to change the country. And as I've just some days ago celebrated my 50th birthday, I just found that actually more than half of my life I actually have spent in occupied country. Occupied in the same way as we just listened. So it, this is very near to all my heart, how your language is pressed, how your culture is pressed, how nobody wants to hear what's really happening in your country. You are cut from the world. You feel that you are alone. And then the so-called singing revolution started and happened. And as it's always better to see as to listen, I asked to put on one small clip from the beautiful movie made with the generous help of the Oslo Freedom Forum, uh, also among all other contributors about this singing revolution. an extraordinary show of mass defiance in the Baltic region of the Soviet Union. Whenever you give free speech to people, then things get out of hand. All the strangers, you know, it's just singing like one man. If 20,000 people start to sing one song, then you just cannot shut them up. It's impossible. freedom through singing it was the most important thing maybe in my life The Estonian miracle, the singing revolution, really was something which uh, changed the life of all nation, and we can say largely of the region. Of course, talking about this peaceful revolution with the power of, of dreams, with the power of song, we must always remember that it based for a long time resistance as Estonia was occupied in 1939-1940, after the secret pact between Stalin and Hitler, two bloodiest dictators in the world history, we lost 20% of population thanks to the Soviet repressions. There are graves in Siberia around them, graves without names. Even not now, don't know where 
our state leaders, many of them are buried or what happened to them. We nevertheless fought. We fought for a long time, hopeless partisan warfare. You see Estonian guerrilla fighters there in the pictures. They fought and died. Nobody was not even interested in the West, what happened in these countries under the Soviet domination. It was hopeless fight, but it created the base for the continuing resistance, which moves to the peaceful demonstrations, to the dissidents, demanding enormous courage, because all this system is based on fear. All the communist brutality is based on fear, to stop the people to speak truth, to stop the people to gather and stand up for the rights. So to be the first one, to be among the first, is always enormous challenge and demands a lot of courage. But it happened because very often it was just seen that there is no other way out and you couldn't live in the lie endlessly. So the Baltic way, all other events which were connected with the singing revolution, demonstrating to the world that yes, we want to be free. Even though we were very frank, uh, sometimes the world didn't want to listen to this. But it was not without blood always. There are pictures from Vilnius in 1991 where the Soviet uh, forces brutally attacked the people without arms, just demonstrating for their freedom. And after this, of course, as it often happens in the same beautiful city of Oslo, not very much far away, Mr. Gorbachev got the Nobel Peace Prize. That's uh, something what is very hard to understand. But that's what we see continuously, continuously around the world. The Estonia reality after we got freedom was of course miserable. The communism is really a devastating system and when it ends, the, what follows is chaos. You see there, uh, to understand what that is, this is Estonian food shop. Uh, only thing what was available was Russian vodka and Armenian brandy. And all other items were disappeared. We had more than 1,000% inflation or our economy was collapsing. Uh, unemployment prognosis run on 35, 40% of the population and so on. From this moment we started really change our countries. We wake the people up in Estonia to become the masters of their own destiny and today Estonia is changed really beyond recognition. So it means that talking about the revolutions, talking about the change, we always must understand that maybe even most difficult part comes afterwards. That uh, democracies uh, are really meeting a lot of challenges because democracy like that is a big challenge. And I'm very happy that during the today's conference and to tomorrow uh, there will be a lot of speakers on this topic also because democracy can fail when it couldn't not deliver to the people uh, these freedoms what they deserve. And in this context the reforms in the role of the law, reforms of democratic institutions and especially the property rights uh, are extremely important because without these the market economy just couldn't work. And I am very happy to have Mr. Hernando de Soto in this conference, one from my personal point of view is one of the most outstanding economists in the modern world. It is important to trust the freedom in this situation, to let the freedom work, because without freedom we just fail. At the same time, talking about all those beautiful things, we must always remember that all this can end in a different way. Young men, the Uyghur demonstration, they have all been peaceful, but they are brutally repressed. The people are killed, the people are tortured, the people are imprisoned, and it's going on so in the same way. And when we have heard the protest in the world in the beginning, very often, quite quickly, those protests will be silenced because the people just want to turn to the normal business as it's called. And that is the problem in our world. Because why the singing revolution was successful? Because in this moment there was large solidarity in the world. There was a large pressure on the Soviet Union. There was really the common understanding that it is bad, it's not 
allowed to use the, the violence. When Soviets pressed and attacked the people in Vilnius, where I saw the pictures, then there was a direct threat of sanctions brought from the side of the United States and uh, the European Union. Where were the sanctions where the Uyghur people were killed? Because that's, to be very frank, is the only way to stop those to threaten regimes to kill the people. And we are just doing beautiful statements. We are supporting uh, the people who are uh, exiled from the, from the countries and nations. And that's nearly it. Because then we go, shake the hands, and change the change the flags of the Freedom Forum with the Russian flags, how it happened just yesterday here in Oslo. Because we are just forgetting. We are forgetting Tianmen. We are che forgetting Chechen wars and massive violations of human rights. We are forgetting against attack against Georgia and ethnic cleansing what has happened there. We are ready to, to make that new treaties, business contacts, sell the military equipment, and so on to all these countries because they are big and large and powerful. We are really looking on Cuba to be part of the Europeans and thinking really seriously that the progress, that this is a real progress in the human rights areas when the people can now visit hotels in Cuba. And so on. That is a problem because we are lacking this solidarity of what is actually needed to really to help the oppressed people. We are not even having courage to talk frankly on the history. We are in very good way, the Europe and the world has condemned the Nazi crimes. But when we start to talk on the communist crimes, they always come people who say, no, no, that's not the same. It's, it's a good maybe to kill the people because they are from the hostile class or from the hostile nation or not existing nation as for the Chinese, the Uyghurs mostly are. Uh, but uh, yes, the Nazis, they were bad, but when you are communist and killing the people, that's not so bad. And uh, that is not an understandable attitude for me. We must speak loudly up. We must talk about all these crimes in the same way, because there is no difference why one or other human beings are killed. When they are killed and repressed, this is a repression about we must react and we must talk about. Because otherwise, the people are really only thinking on the money, as in the China or in Cuba or in Vietnam, where actually the communist governments are using the slave labor to present this to the Western capitalists. This is actually happening. And uh, as we want to earn so much money, then actually we just are very eagerly forgetting the human rights and everything what is connected with this. So in this time, we must need a lot of changes in the free world in the Western world, to really to free this world from the power of the, of the money in this sense that it is only and most important thing and not our values and not our principles. Otherwise, the people who are standing alone, who are real heroes, who are really protesting and giving, are ready to give their life away, they, they will be symbols, yes, they will be very important symbols for the continuation of resistance but they will stay there alone without our help and real support. Is that possible? Is this dream possible? Maybe we have really must accept the facts and saying that is how the world is. The people in the communist countries or the, the other dictatorship are having fear that they will be repressed. We are having fear that we are not earning enough money when we speak truth. Is this fear the most important thing? As it was soon told, uh, actually, we must have courage to have dreams. We in Estonia had. My country is an example that it is worth to dream about. It's not always necessary to think in the world what is possible and what's not, because then we will not act. But when we not act, we are not human beings. We couldn't continue to live in the lies. We must have courage to do something. And to do this as we really know what is possible, or thinking too much and what is possible and what's not, then actually we will stop and we will forget everything. That was the feeling in my country. It was, there was not on times too many people who really believed 
that Estonia can be free. That has probably many people in the Uyghur who really think that it, this violence will last forever. I have seen with my own eyes, I have worked for this to end it, and it really ended. So it was possible. In the same way, we know all that it's not possible to walk on the water, but when you are enough fast, when you are enough brave, and you don't know this is possible, you can do this. As this lizard does, and walking to the water, when we're not having fear, is possible and open for all of us. Let's have no fear. Let's fight for the freedom, and let's support these people who do this. Thank you.